Hi everyone, today is Vlog Monday. Mondays are gonna be the day that I release a video and I'm on my like couple times of recording this and I feel like the last one was just, I don't know. I don't know. So praise the Lord. Let's just get through this because I hear my babies are starting to wake up. And last week, I just wanna respect your time too. That's that's a big thing. But last week, um, we talked about the thief and how he comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. And it says then in following in John 10, 10, it says that Jesus is speaking and says, My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Some scriptures say full life. Some scriptures say the life overflowing, um, abundance, like anything good and like overflow that's what god is that's what he has for us and sometimes we can look at our circumstance and say oh how is this god why is god doing this to me like we talked about last week but really it's the enemy and god wants us to meditate on his word who he is and what he has accomplished in times past and not even just in our life but through the word he's time and time again he's been the one that takes us, redeems us, restores us, and then gives us blessings. A good testimony on that is Job. But yes, so that was John 10.10. 10. And I want to continue to read because then Jesus goes on to say in verse 14 through 18, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me. Just as my father knows me I know, and I know the father. So I sacrifice my life for the sheep. I have other sheep too that are not in the sheepfold and I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice and there will be one flock with one shepherd. The Father loves me because I sacrificed my life so I can take it back again. No one can take my life from me. I sacrifice it voluntarily, for I have the authority to lay it down when I want to and also to take it up again. For this is what my Father has commanded. So, when I see this, I see that Jesus is purely the sacrifice to all things in our life that are good to where we can experience health, to where we can experience breakthrough, to where we can experience the abundance, the overflow, the hand of God and the favor of God on our lives that opens doors that you can look and say, how did God do that? Where is this coming from? Well, it's coming from the ultimate sacrifice. He laid it down so that we can have the fullness of life that God intended to us before the fall when Adam and Eve sinned. So as that goes on, I want to also read... I just really feel like we have to open the eyes to what God is, and God is all things good. There's there's a couple scriptures I'm just going to go through, and the next one is going to be John 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God, and God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. And the word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. And what I love about this, my one favorite part, well, it's all really good and it's really deep, but my one favorite part is, God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him, and he was the word that gave life to everything that was created. So when we look in our life and we see like maybe an unfortunate circumstance of maybe not, well, I don't want to just say death and talk about death, but like death or sickness or um, just not even no joy in your home or happiness or depression. Um, the amazing thing is, is Jesus was the ultimate. He was the first. He was the beginning. And he had for you life. There was no darkness in it. And if there was any darkness, he would extinguish it. So if you're experiencing those things, I, I challenge you to, whether it's you get in the word to know the word, what's in here, or I challenge you to go to church and press into him and say, Jesus, I'm going. I don't care if this is the last thing I'm going to do. I'm going to church and I want to experience you. I just feel like he wants to reveal himself as the light because he, it says in here, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. So I feel as if even if you're experiencing that bad place, God is the author of all things in life and he is life. So he will breathe on those circumstances if you allow him to. He has a purpose and a plan. And what we talked about last week is the enemy doesn't want you to figure it out. He, whether you're blinded because you don't even believe in God, he 
is already you've already submitted to the lies of the enemy in that but God has a better life even for you. Even if you're lif- looking at life and you're like, my life's good. I don't believe in God. I don't care. Well, I challenge you because I God will give you an even greater life and an even more fulfilling purpose than the day-to-days of what you're experiencing. And I really feel as if God wants to show himself to you in a greater measure in that way. And next I want to go to, I'm sorry, bear with me, because I had all my notes on my phone, but I also record from my phone, so... It's kind of interesting. So I have like literally one page, maybe one page and another little note. And that's it. So everything's on my phone. So I'm going to be flipping through pages and just bear with me. So as that is, God is light. He's all things good. And he, I just, and I guess that I love everything in this. But my favorite part is that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. Well, if that's the promise, if that's the only promise in the word, every area of darkness in our life, if we let Jesus to come in and we say, Jesus, take over this part, he's going to come in and it's going to be extinguished, which means it cannot exist. If you look at a fire and you take a fire extinguisher, what does it do? It lets it out and it cannot exist because the extinguisher has something in it that allows the fire to be suffocated. And in this instance, Jesus is the light bearer in he will extinguish the darkness, which will allow it to be suffocated. And what happens in suffocation? It dies. Sorry, that's really extreme, but it's the truth. So, I love that, and I love that God is... I love that he talks about that in First John. I have a baby coming down. He's in... Di- he's in, We're potty training right now, so let me just get this. Okay, we can do this. Okay, so that was John, first, John 1, 1 through 10. Or... Er, one through five, I'm sorry. And then I want to just go to... Hi, Bubba. Mommy, I'll take a nap. You take a nap, yes. You want to come sit and preach the word with me? Come oh, sit. Okay. Okay. Say hi, everyone. Uh, oh, why? Say hi. You want water? Okay. Let me just... Okay. Take a sip of that. Okay. So, now I just want to go to... I'm going to be really quick, obviously. Um, I'm not going to keep re recording. So then the last one I want to go to is 1 John 1 5. So 1 John, we're we're doing this. 1 John 1 5 says, okay bear with me. I'm taking a nap. Yeah you did a good job taking a nap. Okay here's another example of the character of God and these are only a few scriptures which is insane because there's an intent like look how big this bible is. Hello I, I think I have more of a larger Bible than most people because it weighs like 10 pounds, but it's spoke to me in all seasons. So if uh, 1 John 1, 5 says, Mommy. this is the message we heard from Jesus Mommy. and now declare to you, God is light and there is no darkness Mommy. in him at all. So uh-huh. again, here, you want to call her? Again, I just feel like Mommy. God wants yeah, to reiterate and show his self and reveal himself to That's you by me. saying, and say that, he is all things good. He is not bad. It is the enemy. There is an enemy that you are facing if you are facing anything. And if you do come to face something, it is the enemy. It's not him that's bringing it upon you. But he just wants you to invite him in so that he, way he can extinguish every dark area in your life. So I guess in closing, I just feel before we move on to what your purpose is and what your calling is and to really reiterate I feel like God wanted me to touch base on the thief which we did last week and now he wants to touch base on who he is and I hope this given you a glimpse of what reality of what and who Jesus is I know it's short and I'm sorry for the interruptions but this is my mom life if you're not a mom you will someday understand but I just want to get serious and just reiterate if P.S. It says, okay, I only read one verse, but go to 1 John 1 5. If you can see it. 1 John 1 5. The title on it is God is Light. So I feel like we're on to something. And as you go about your day, or you don't draw my Bible, as you go about your day and um, have time to even flip open the word, go to 1 John 1 and you'll start to see the character of God and who he is. Um, I guess in closing, let's just pray. I'm sorry this was interrupted, but this is literally, I I can't keep doing it because it's just going to be a challenge 
at some point. I have someone coming over in a few minutes. So let's just pray and believe God to do something amazing. Father God, I just thank you so much for every person who tuned in. I know this nugget may seem to have been a little out of order, but it's order in my but life and the reality of my life. So Lord, I just ask that every ear, eye, and heart that has listened will hear you, God. I ask that you just continue to reveal yourself, your purpose, and your plan in who you are, the character that you are, God, because there's no mistake that anybody is listening. I thank you, Lord, that you just touch every ear, every heart, every mind, every soul. Lord, I ask that for those who do not believe in you, that this is just a glimpse into who you are and speaking to them because, God, you don't require us to be the seed sower and the water. God, you, sow, you use us to sow the seed, but it's up to you to water it. So, Father, I just thank you that you continue to water the seeds in the hearts that you've planted. Father, I just ask you that if there's a heart that is so down and distraught, I ask that you touch her or him. Father, I ask that you send vessels or lead them to a church that they need to be at. Father, I ask that your Holy Spirit breathes life into them and that it distinguishes every ounce of darkness and death that is a, that has come upon them. Holy Spirit, have your way. Move and breathe life because that is what you are. And Father, I just thank you that next week as we go into purpose, you start giving people dreams and visions to impart their purpose into their life. And with you, nothing is impossible. It says it time and time again in your word. Father, I thank you for this now. Bless them, bless every ear, and bless every heart. And thank you for patience on my part. Thank you for giving me patience. In Jesus' name, amen. Sorry. Amen. Amen. Sorry for Mama, I get the wake up time. Robert. Can you say bye, Dominic? Bye. Say God bless you. Say bless you. Thank you. We love you guys.